Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to this little podcast. This is the Little Be and Me podcast. I'm Kayleen, I'm your host. I am the uh, principal fiber artist and dyer behind Little Bean Crochet on Etsy and the Little Bean Loves Hand Painted Yarn independently dyed yarn line. Um, I'm coming to you here from the North Shore of Boston and I'm just here to chat about the things I've been working on in crochet, spinning, knitting, dyeing yarn, um, and just general life bits. So if you're a new viewer, welcome. I hope you enjoy. And for anybody who's returning subscribers, welcome back. Uh, I'm glad to see you again and I hope you all enjoyed this long weekend. We just had in the United States uh, this past Monday was Labor Day, so most folks had it off from work or school. And this week was the big back to school week, so my entire news feed on Facebook has been filled with first day of preschools. And tomorrow is Friday, and tomorrow is Cecilia's official first day of preschool. My baby, where does she go? So I'm very excited for that. But um, anyway, let's just get right into everything. Um, you can find me, Kayleen, on all different social media outlets. I am Little Bean Crochet Shop on Facebook, Little Bean Crochet on Etsy, and KM Weaver on Ravelry. Um, also Little Bean Crochet on Instagram. Instagram's where I'm most active, so if you're looking for me, that's where you're gonna find me. If you need to send me a message, you're always welcome to leave a comment or question down below or send me a message on Etsy or on Ravelry or on Instagram, pretty much all the places. Um, and as always, you'll find the notes for this episode down in the down bar, also in the Ravelry group for the Little Bean and Me podcast. So if you search in the groups tab on Ravelry for Little Bean and Me podcast, you will find us. We're a very small group, not super active yet, but hopefully we'll be growing in the coming months. Uh, anyway, so been a light dye week for me. I am pretty much out of stock on everything and waiting for a shipment of yarn to come in. It should be here by tomorrow, so I'll be getting back to my dye pots tomorrow. Uh, but I did have a large sale over the weekend uh, for the Little Bean Crochet Shop. We I put pretty much all of my ready-to-ship yarn in the clearance section, including some mini skein sets and some gradient sets and pretty much every, every skein of yarn that I've had dyed in the clearance section and people just whoop, it's almost all gone at this point and I couldn't be more pleased. So anybody who participated in the sale who grabbed a, a skein of yarn that they wanted, thank you so very much. It's much appreciated and I'm glad you're enjoying. So just don't forget to share with me what you make. I love to see it. It's almost like my babies in the world. You know, I, I, I create these things and I stitch them up myself sometimes, but really seeing what people are, are making with it and combine it with different things, I love to see it. So feel free to share. Um, in terms of works in progress or finished objects, um, I still have a couple of things in progress, which is the mermaid blanket that is still sitting in a bag waiting to be finished and the blanket I'm stitching together for a client down at Marblehead Knits. And that's about it for works in progress. But finished objects, I have two finished objects. Yes, two finished objects for knit and crochet. One I finished last week and I didn't show you, which was this beanie. Um, this was the skein of Lolo Did It's Pretty Young Thing that I picked up a couple of weeks ago and I was wondering what I was going to make with it so of course I made my daughter a hat. Um, this is the Hook Nooks Puff Stitch Slouchy Beanie. It's a paid for pattern on Ravelry but it's very simple. Um, this is in an, in an adult size but my children have abnormally large heads because my husband has a large head so all their stuff I end up making a little bit bigger. But this is the most bright and beautiful color ever. And it's definitely my daughter. She is three today. Oh, today's her birthday. I forgot to mention that. Today's my daughter's birthday, so happy birthday, Cece. But this is her hat for the winter for this year and possibly next year too, because it probably will fit her. But I did finish that a couple of weeks ago. And then I finished my second knit thing, which is another barley hat. Um, so this was the first barley hat I finished. I finished this 
and I showed it on last week's podcast and I was also very proud of myself and I said I already cast one on and sure enough as so I was interrupted as usual because Cecilia's here so anyway I finished a barley hat last week and I was so proud and I told you I cast on another one and sure enough I finished it within a couple of days. We did a road trip down to uh, Rhode Island where I am from to visit uh, some family and I worked on this in the car. I was already about this far done when we got to the car and then by the time the day was over Sunday rolled around and I finished the hat. So this is the finished barley hat. It is slightly larger than the other one. Oh, look at the color. So this is the Wigan Tree colorway. Um, it's showing up, it's washing me out, but this is accurate to color. It's showing up nice and bright so you can see the variations. There we go. So this is in real life, but you can see the color variations here. So there's some oranges and purples and reds and greens and browns. Oh, it's getting washed out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's a little bit larger than the last one that I made. Again, I found it super easy, very intuitive. So you can see, let's see if we can show the size difference here. The width is the same because I made the same sized hat on the same size needles. I just continued growing the top of the hat for about an extra inch or so. So there's the size difference. So this fits my son a lot better. Um, if I wanted to, I could block this out, I think, and gain maybe another half an inch or so on height and width. It fits his dome, but it just, you know, cuts him right here. So this new one comes right here on his earlobe, so covers his ears nicely for the winter. And I'm very pleased with this. It's a beautiful color. It fits my daughter, too, because they both have gigantic heads, but very easy, very intuitive. And I'm super proud that I finished another knit thing. So the next thing I wanna knit up, so I have a couple things that I'm planning. So if you guys watch a couple different podcasts, one is the Strings and More podcast, which I've mentioned a couple times here, but they're having a mid along for the month of September. I take, I take the plug back out. Can you put the plug back in? It's gonna turn off, you need to leave the plug in. Plug it in. The change between last week and this week is astounding. It's astounding how many times I get interrupted. Half the time I end up editing, editing it out or I like make some creative edits so you can see me walking away from the camera back and forth, back and forth. It really, for a 45 minute podcast, takes me probably close to an hour and a half to film because I get interrupted so many times and so many things have to get edited out. But anyway. And I'm gonna go help her put the plug for the iPad back in. I'll be right back. Okay, okay, so we're back. Sandwich is done, apple is done. Hopefully no more interruptions. Again, hopefully, it's never a guarantee here. So, okay, so I finished up the hats and then my next knit projects I think is what I was talking about so I have a plan for two things but it could be one project thing if I work it the right way so um, there are two podcasts that I really love to watch and one is strings and more um, it is hosted by Jamie and Shanna uh, Jamie and Shanna are knitting best friends and they host every single week and they talk about the projects they're working on. Uh, Shanna owns Lampstrings Yarn, which is also another independently dyed yarn company, so you should definitely go check her out. She has some beautiful colors. Um, and so they are doing a Strings and More Knit Along, which is a knit along. And um, I'm a little nervous because I've never knit a pair of mittens before and I can knit pretty quickly. I mean, I can knit this in a single day. So I think I could do a set of mitts, like fingerless mitts within a couple of days. So I'm gonna have to see what I can do. I was looking um, at Tin Can Knits. They have a, a simple knit pattern. Uh, Maze, I think is the pattern, M-A-I-Z-E. And I'll pop a picture up somewhere so that you can see but they have you know a full mitten and then they have the fingerless mitts and I'm really interested to do the fingerless mitts and I think they're pretty short they come to here 
I'd like to make them a little bit longer. So I think I can do some extra rows between the ribbing and the thumb gusset. They say an inch. So normally it would be like this before they start the thumb gusset. So I think I might do two inches of pattern repeat before the hand. Um, but I'm a crocheter and I've never knit a pair of mitts before in my life, but I thought maybe those would be simple enough. They're not straight stock net. They have, you know, increases. It's some reverse stock net and, knit, you know, regular stock net stitches, but it's, you know, there's a certain pattern to the whole mitten, so it's not just straight up. So I'll see if I can admit that. I'll have to ask them uh, and post them the thread because I still haven't. But I wanted to do that mid along, and I also wanted to participate in the Pumpkin Cow, which is hosted over at Stitching the High Notes with Miss Joanna, and also at Once Upon a Corgi with Gabby. Um, you can find them both, I'll put their information below and on the screen and wherever, but they're awesome too, and I watch both their podcasts, and they're hosting a pumpkin along, so anything that's pumpkin themed. The grand plan that got, you know, kind of thrown last week was I was going to spin some yarn that was pumpkin colors, and I was going to knit something for the pumpkin along, and maybe that same pumpkin mittens could be done for the mitt along for strings and more too. So this is the fiber. It's a little fling blah, 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 blah. It's all messed up. But this is the fiber I got. This is a Shirsty Cat Designs dyed this. She is also another independent dyer, but she dyes a lot of roving. Um, I've only dyed a little bit of roving, so I'm not very good at it. I don't really have a good feel for handling roving because it's so much different than yarn. But this is just 100% superwash merino. Very squishy, very soft. And so the first thing is my spindle has a new spindly bit, spindly bit. <laughs> um, so my spindle, as you know, was broken. I broke it last week and I was so sad because my gosh darn thighs were too quick to smash my smash my spindle. Uh, when I dropped it, I kind of clumped on it and broke it. So I ordered one from Wisteria and Ryan down at Lucky Pluck Farms. I ordered a replacement. They said, yes, we'll do replacements and they put up a listing for me. Um, so they replaced my spindle, which was very nice. Not the spindle part, but the, I got a replacement um, stick -a bob <laughs> I don't know what you call it. I know when, when you wind the yarn on it, it's called a cob. So the stick -a bob for the cob. Um, and then I had my husband pick up some picture hanging um, eyelets from the hardware store because my the hook that they gave for the spindle um, I'm not exactly a gentle person when I'm spinning and I'm still kind of learning about tension and how how much I should be pulling um, but I had him grab this for me this is just a picture hanging hook like an eyelet that you can just open a little it's a screw in and it fit perfectly in the hole that was burred into the um, the spindle part the actual shaft part so uh, I had my husband pick that up for me and I was able to spin some fiber and ply some fiber in the last two days and I'll show that to you now. It's still up on my nitty naughty. It's recently gotten a bath but I spun stuff and I plied stuff for the first time. I don't know if you can see the colors very well. Um, it's, it's the green and orange from this, this roving spun up. It is a little thick and thin. This is my first time trying to ply uh, yarn, but I think this is about 45 yards of bulky weight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, ish like heavy worsted light bulky type stuff it was very thick and thin so I had my singles that I spun and they were you know pretty good but there are some thin spots and I'm stitching up these mittens yesterday and it just wasn't looking right it was kind of hard because some of the thin spots were like lining up 
over each other. So it was creating these really thin pieces to the mitts and I didn't want that to happen. So what I decided to do with all the fiber that I spun in singles was to do a ply. So I just, I had two balls of um, spun singles and I um, center pulled them and then spun them on the spindle to ply them. So I took them spun them, wound them, spun them, wound them, spun them, wound them for, you know, however long it took me, not very long to do all of that. Um, so yeah, so that's what I did. And so now I'm wondering what I'm going to do with this because I don't have enough to make mittens with just this. I don't think, unless I make child mittens, which I could do, but I wanted to make something for myself. I wanted to be a little selfish. So we'll see. Um, but I did want to show you a little spinning because I've improved my technique, guys. I've improved my technique. So let me pull a little fiber. Um, so this spindle is really great. It's got a very nice weight to it. I'm really liking it. Although I don't have much experience with spindles in general. Like I'm not generally a, um, spindle aficionado since this is my first spindle. But I can say is that spinning this merino is far different than spinning the BFL that I was spinning before. So um, I'm just creating a little bit of a lead here so I can secure it to the to the spindle do thing. <laughs> um, but the merino is has a shorter staple length, so the fibers are a little shorter. And so I've noticed that when the spots get thin they really fall like I dropped this so many more times spinning this merino than I did with the BFL at all like it was unbelievable so this is I just put a little bit of a lead on here so what I do is I'll pre-draft the fiber a bit this is not a good example because I'm just starting the thing the thing the thing in my bobby oh my god Let's fast forward this part while I struggle. Okay, so now I have some fiber here. It's not, I, this is not how I normally would start, but um, some things I've noticed that were different. So the merino is definitely shorter staple so it's easier to um, draft while I'm spinning and that's great because I like to do that let me back up so I like to draft while I'm spinning that's just how I'm comfortable I don't like to pre-draft a whole ton but I do but what I did notice was that the merino falls so it's much softer, it has a much shorter staple length. So when you get thin, like you don't have as much leeway for where the fiber is caught onto itself from the bundle. So if I try to pre-draft this, I have a shorter length of where it can be slightly unspun before the merino just falls to the ground and breaks because there's not enough twist in the, um, in the fiber. So I'm just drafting out and this is how I prefer to draft. I mean, it's what is, a little comfortable for me. I still have to get used to, you know, the different types of fiber, but I'm able to, see, I'm able to draft this much easier. Um, but it's true. They said it was all about the prep of the fiber and what your, um, you know, learning about the type of fiber that you're spinning. That's what's really important. So like with the BFL, I was pre-drafting, like I was setting Got a little twist in my bundle here. Um, I was trying to pull too much at once. And and um, so what I had to do was like pre-draft and I would pre-draft a bunch, pick it up and spin it, right? So that I was getting a much more even draft. But because the merino, I'm able to draft while I spin, I'm able to get a very nice consistent um, wait. So yeah, I was pulling off large, um, thin pre-drafted fibers from the, the braid. So that's how I spin with this. 
with the BFL, I'll usually pre-draft, uh, spin, you know, let the spin up and then park it and then let the spin farther up into the fiber because this, the staple is so long. Um, there's a lot of ums. I'm umming a lot today. What is up with that? So for the BFL, what I was doing, if you pretend this is a little bit of a longer piece, is I was just taking the fiber and pr like pre-drafting. So I was pulling it out and just pulling it out, pulling it out, and pulling it out, and pulling it out, pulling it out, then attaching it, and then just spinning the whole thing because I was having trouble pulling and drafting out uh, while I was dropping. So that's why I just spun right now which is pretty good. It's not too bad. It's like light to heavy fingering, fingering weight. Um, so yeah, so that's what I spun and then that's what I applied. And so I wanted to make mitts for the pumpkin along and also do it for the mid along, but who knows if that will actually work or not work, whatever. So I'm very pleased with this. I'm happy to be spinning again. Uh, if anybody else wants to share their spinning stuff, feel free to start a thread in the Ravelry. We can chat about spinning um, different types of fiber because I don't know much. I've only spun the BFL and the Merino, and I got a little bit of CVM, which is something, something mutant. I forget the type of sheep. This was very freshly shorn. It was still very lanolin-y, very waxy. When I spun it, I should have probably washed it out a little bit uh, to get out some of the lanolin, but it was fun to spin anyway. I don't care. Okay, so then I got my replacement. Hi, I got my replacement spindly do, and so Wisteria and Ryan were kind enough to send me some of this beautiful hand spun. This is um, from Princess, who is one of their sheep. She's a CVM blah, 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 mutant, whatever it is. I think it's like. Cara, cows or something, variant mutant. I'm awful. I don't know. I don't know enough yet. Uh, but this is a worsted weight yarn, almost four ounces. It's 221 yards, and the colorway is called Harvest Time. And this was spun by Marsha. They put all the information on the label, who it was from. But this is right from Lucky Pluck Farms. Lucky Pluck Farm. Sorry. Usually my camera's on this side. So I keep looking over there as if I'm looking in the camera, but the camera's right here. Um, but here it is, Lucky Pluck Farm. They're pretty local to me. They're from Vermont. Um, it's pretty cool. So I'm thinking of a plan for these. So these are a bit, this is a bit fall-ish, pumpkin-y colored. So maybe I'll make mitts out of this. Um, there's, you know, the color is harvest time and it, there's certainly pumpkin colors in here. It's very fall feeling, so. Maybe I'll make mitts out of this, who knows. But I wanted to show that here uh, from Lucky Pluck. Just lovely. Uh, other things, other plans. So I do plan to make another one of these in my third tree colorway, which is this one. This is Elder Tree. Um, this, this is the DK. Yes, this is the DK. So I'll have a set of three. So I'll have all three trees knitted up. So, uh, Whomping Willow, Wigan Tree, and Elder Tree. So they'll all be knit up. And then this week I also plan to dye, I think, Buckthorn. I think Buckthorn will be the next Harry Potter tree that I dye up. But again, I'm waiting for my yarn. Just sitting here on the post office waiting, waiting, waiting. <sighs> oh yeah, let me show you these. These are the screw eyes. We got from Ace. They are 7 16 7 inch. And these fit beautifully in the um, in the top of the spindle. So if anybody was wondering what those looked like. Yeah, but I don't really have anything else for finished pro Oh, I do have one more finished project. <laughs> Sorry guys, this is a little all over the place. Um, I've already been interrupted like three times. So the other finished object I don't have here because it's already gone, but I'll put a picture here. It is the, it's an elephant hat that I made for the local photographer. I do some, um, you know, custom work for, and it's for a newborn and I'm so excited to see it on the newborn. It has little tufts of hair coming out of the top. It's really cute. I'm so excited. Not, there's no good patterns on Ravelry that I liked for the hat. So I think, I don't know if I'll write that one up. It's pretty basic. 
I'll have to do another test run of the ears because it's really the ears that are the, are the hard part because you have to shape them like elephant ears. They have to be not too big, not too small. But I just made it out of, you know, Karen Super Soft or Simply Soft or whatever it's called. That's what I usually make the uh, baby work that I do out of just in case the baby has an allergy to lamb's wool. I don't like to make things out of wool for little infants. <laughs> It's Thursday. I'm ready for this week to be over. I guess we can just go into like little bits of blabble um, shop updates. I don't think there'll be a shop update this week. I'm gonna try. I have a custom custom orders to work up this weekend. Some orders came in over last weekend, and I'm just waiting for the shipment. So as far as like a fresh dye, a new colorway, probably will be coming next week. I'm thinking about setting a day for shop updates so that I'll just die all week, prepare, and then do a shop update at a set time. So I'm not sure, you know, if you guys are following my shop or if you're interested in that, please let me know down below. Um, it'll at least help give me a little bit of more structure in terms of updates so that you guys can know when to expect any new colorways or if you're requesting some colorways be dyed up as di um, ready to ship, then you'll know when to expect them in the shop. Um, but I was thinking about doing, you know, a Thursday or Friday or Saturday shop update day where I pick a time and say like, okay, shop updates are Saturdays at 12 and that's when, you know, a shop update would be. So I was thinking about that this week. Um, this past weekend we had a birthday party for Cecilia. So we went to visit some family on Saturday and then Sunday we did the birthday party. So it was a, a co-birthday party with Cece and her brother, which was very nice. Um, you know, a, a lot of folks came. It, I'll put in some footage here for you guys at the end, but it was really cute. We sang happy birthday, Tucker had his cake smash, and um, he went for a nap. <laughs> and then the party was over. We, we timed it from like 10 to 12 so that we'd have Tucker up and then napping by the time the party was over and then everybody could go and we'd open presents and so, um, I also put in the footage of uh, Cece opening all of the presents. Uh, she opened up all of Tucker's and her own presents and she was very much excited for the presents for Tucker and not as excited for the presents for her, except the nail polish that she got and also this Cinderella doll that like lights up and sings and stuff. She was very excited about that. And then my dad came with his wife and they brought us this delicious tomato you know when you get stuff directly from the garden and just has this smell? You know, that fresh garden smell that you just don't get in the grocery store? Look how ripe that tomato is. It is the most delicious tomato. It's been sitting on the counter for a couple of days now and I'm really excited to eat this. I might make a, a little tomato salad with tomato, onion, and cucumber and eat that up, but it just smells so good. I don't know if you guys like tomatoes, but I do. <laughs> um, but it's delicious. I might eat it. Uh, there's lots of ums today. I'm just really tired from this holiday weekend. Just um, um, um. But yeah, I don't think there's anything else. There's nothing else really. I'm excited to think something up for this, to make another hat with this, get some dyeing done. I'm very excited to get my pots fired up again. But yeah. Well, I suppose that's all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy. This is a little bit more casual, a little shorter, still a little bit interrupted, but you know, I'm pretty low energy today. I just don't, I just don't have it in me <laughs> to do anything crazy today. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And um, yeah, if you're looking for more information, you can always find me on social media. You can find me as Little Bean Crochet on Instagram. I'm posting every single day there. There's also the Ravelry group, Little Bean and Me podcast. We do have a, a knitter crochet along going on for the spooky season, so like a Halloween cow. I'm going to extend the deadline for that from October 1st right through the month of October. I haven't started anything up for that yet. I haven't even like my ideas aren't bubbling for what I want to make for that, so I think I'm just going to extend uh, the deadline through the entire month of October. I'm going to be putting some colorways up for the Halloween stuff as ready to ship probably in the next couple of weeks. I'll have a few skeins of each 
uh, ready to go if any of you are looking for that. Mm, the pre-orders were already shipped, all the Labor Day orders were shipped, so it's just a matter of time before I dye them up and get them ready and out for you. So thanks so much again guys, I hope you enjoyed, enjoy your weekend, have a nice relaxing weekend, and I'll see you next week. Bye! Blow it! <laughs> Yay! Yay! Woo! Yay! I'm not that good. Look at her. There you go, buddy. <laughs> you want your gut? What's your gut? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Toy. Yeah, we'll save that for we'll Tucker, save that for Tucker when he gets up. Here, let's go open the card. Hold on, back up, back up, back up, back up. Let's see, okay, this one says Tucker. It says, it's your first birthday today, you're one wonderful day. Tucker, love Hannah. This is from Hannah. Birthday, Cece. Love Riley and Cody. <gasps> That's from Riley and Cody. Who is, what is it? Else. <gasps> what else is in there? What is it? Painting your fingers. Can you say thank you?